they're not going to see that you've been keeping it updated. So it gives the viewer and the potential guests that want to make a reservation at one of your inns not a very good impression. You know, the other alternative of that is many associations have social media accounts, but they're not actually advertising them. So if you have a Facebook account and it's not linked off of your association, people aren't necessarily going to go to Facebook and then, you know, look internally in Facebook to find your association page. They're relying on going to your association website and then clicking on the Facebook link and then going over to your Facebook page from there. Now, this is some of the commonly used social media platforms for this past year. Facebook, as you can see, is always in the top percentile. Um, down here, I would recommend if you have not subscribed to this, Social Media Examiner is one of the best websites out there. They have an email newsletter that you can subscribe to, and they always have experts throughout all of the social media industries um, putting information out. So anytime there's a new rollout of an option, for example, anytime there's new features that a social media platform might have, um, Social Media Examiner is one of the best places to go to to find updated information. I would highly uh, suggest subscribing to their newsletter and keeping updated on that. What's interesting is I have screenshots over the past, I would say, four years from Social Media Examiner of this report that they do every year. And it's interesting to see how much um, these numbers have changed and which platforms go up and down. Twitter is the second most commonly used, and LinkedIn while not very necessarily important for innkeepers and innkeepers associations to use, uh, they, it, is, it is good to have a business page on there if you're able to do that. And if anyone's interested in helping get one set up, I would certainly be happy to do that after the webinar. YouTube is an extremely important channel for both innkeepers and associations. But as I mentioned, only two associations are currently using that. Blogging and Google Plus and Pinterest are also very high. Now this Pinterest number is very interesting, as is Google Plus, because if you go back a few years ago, these two, Google and Pinterest, were much less commonly used, and they're definitely growing in importance. Now this is Michigan Lake to Lake. I know that Linda is on this today, so I'm going to use her as an example, because I love their page. And so if you do have a Facebook page, it's important to try to keep it updated at least once a week. If you can do a couple times a month even, just look like it keep just make it look like it's active. You know, you don't necessarily have to post every day. Facebook is a different social media and a difficult social media platform for people to use and for associations and for innkeepers to use because they change many of the options very frequently and it's the worst culprit at not letting people know about it. They just actually roll something out and you come across it and say, geez, that looks different, or they move something and then you can't find it again. Um, they recently hid where um, your likes come from, so you can't actually find very easily who a new like is and where they're coming from and what their name is, unfortunately. They're also rolling out some new options for mobile and including um, the beacons that are just rolling out for individual innkeepers. For associations that are not aware of Facebook beacons, it is something that they should look into. And also, especially if they have innkeepers that are in more uh, I would say more cityed areas as opposed to more rural areas to encourage them to sign up for the beacons. They're free. Um, the beacons can give information to local travelers and to local guests about the innkeeper, so it will help the innkeeper and the inn, and it will help their marketing. Now, because Facebook changed its algorithms about a year and a half ago, it's harder and harder for um, any small business or any association, unless you're Coca-Cola, that can spend an awful lot of money advertising to get its posts seen. So if you're an association and you have 500 likes, for example, even if you're looking at your insights, you're looking at what times are the best times to post per day or per week, and you're posting at the optimal times, you're still going to get very, very limited engagement. It does not necessarily mean that you're doing it wrong or that you're posting things incorrectly. It means that Facebook is throttling your posts. Statistically, they're saying under 3%, sometimes as little as 1% of the people that have actually liked your page are seeing their posts. Now, in terms of posting and how you can like your members, 
when you're on Facebook as an association, you can like uh, your in-keeping members pages as your page. So this is uh, in -keep or a CABI, for example, California's association. So they could go to all of their INS member pages and like that, and it will show up on the left-hand side of CABI's page. Now, in terms of what to post, this is where associations are going to differ from the individual INS. And it's really going to depend on what your aim is. Is your association rural? Is it regional? Is it a state-driven one? And because of that, you're going to have different things that you're going to want to aggregate content for. Now, in order to help your members the most, you're going to want to reshare their content primarily. Instead of coming up with necessarily you know, regional or statewide things, you want to help promote your members on your Facebook page by sharing their posts. This is actually good for the association because it limits the amount of time and limits the amount of content that the association or whoever is posting on the association's behalf has to come up with. Realistically, you only have to spend a couple of minutes per week on this. So I know that one of the association's challenges across many different types of associations and different types of businesses is generally you're reliant on volunteers to do all of this. Now, Facebook has something called interest lists. They're also known as um, activity lists. And you can only use these from a personal account. Um, so if you're logged into Facebook, you don't want to be using your Facebook page as your page. You want to be using it personally. And using these lists will help you as who, who's ever posting to Facebook aggregate content for if you're posting regionally or if you're posting uh, state tourism events, for example, or if you want to aggregate your members' content and make it easier to find it all in one place. Now, in order to add something to a list, you're going to have to like the page. And then down on the bottom, I have a bunch of lists here, for example. You're going to see it says add to list. So you're going to create a new list. And then you can add whatever the page is to multiple lists. So say you have an innkeeper, for example, in you know, the northwest region of New York. And it's also in Adirondacks, for example. So you could add them to two lists. One would say member lists, and the other one would say Adirondacks ins. And then you can go to those individual lists, and it will aggregate everybody who's been added to a list. And it'll aggregate all of their content together for the past two weeks. So anytime you're looking for content to reshare and, and repost on, on your own Facebook page, you just have to go to the list feature, and it will basically cherry pick all the content together for you. Now, if you do go and you add something to a list and you don't want to keep the page necessarily liked, after you've added it to a list, you can actually go back and refresh the page and unlike it. Um, Facebook lists are fantastic because if you have state magazines, for example, or you have other state associations or tourism associations that you can help rebroadcast their content, go ahead and add them to a list. Um, lists can be public, they can be private. Um, you can't necessarily add several people to administer the same list, but you can share a list with someone else as long as they're friends. Um, a public list, other people can subscribe to it. So if you had four board members, for example, and they all wanted to help repost your Facebook content, then all of them could actually subscribe to their list and help you with the content putting it out. Now, this is an example of like the Hudson Valley Lodging Association. This is an aggregated list of 25 of their members that have uh, Facebook pages that have been put on a list. So if you were the Hudson Valley Lodging Association, for example, you could click on this list and then go to any of these posts and then just go to share and then add the content directly onto your own page. Now here's an example, for example, of some area things to do. This is for the Dartmouth Lake Sunapee region, and this is specifically for an inn. But what this list is an aggregation of local newspapers, some tourism activities, and some local stores and some local nonprofits that might have gardening events, for example, or anything regional like uh, perhaps a town fair or a citywide um, carnival that you'd want to repost and help promote the tourism area on. 
Now, Facebook is great in some regards, and as I said, it does have some minuses. But if you're already using Facebook and you have abandoned your Facebook account for your association, I would suggest revisiting. Um, it is a great way to advertise your ins. It's a great way to add advertise um, your regional or state um, association and what there is to do in it. And as I mentioned, if you put content onto these lists and you aggregate these pages onto lists, it makes coming up with your own content to be, have to be able to share it much, much easier. Facebook also has some added advantages. And to, let me go back for a couple of slides. And here, for those of you that are not aware of it, I'm not the administrator of this page, um, so you won't see it, but if you were logged in as an administrator on this page and you posted something in here, there'd be a little tab over here, which means that you could pre-schedule something. So if you took, say, half an hour per month and you were a state organization and you were trying to help promote things all over the state and you had maybe 100 ends scattered all over the place, what I would do is portion your state into segments, so you know perhaps north, south, east, west, or if there's other specific regions, like in New Hampshire we have um, the White Mountains region and the Lakes region, is find some specific events and then put them into a calendar and then find links that those are going to link to and then pre-schedule those posts throughout the year that are helping to advertise all of the regions throughout your association's region. And once you start getting ahead on a lot of that content, it becomes a lot easier because it's already pre-scheduled in there. It will automatically post to the page. Once it's pre-scheduled, you do have the ability to change the date. You can also edit the post or you can delete it, which is fantastic. Um, Facebook pages also let you have multiple administrators. Now, if you're an administrator on a Facebook association page or any page, um, anyone with administrative capabilities does have the ability to delete the page itself. Um, Facebook has changed this so that if a page does get deleted, it goes into sort of uh, ghost mode for about two weeks where it can be undeleted. Unfortunately, if the person that's deleted the page has also kicked off any of the other administrators, then you can't recover the page and Facebook will not let you in. Um, I would recommend if you do want to have multiple contributors to the Facebook page itself for the association, to have them set as contributor access, which means that they can post to the page, they can interact with people, but they do not have administrative capabilities. Now this is an example of the Oregon uh, B&B Guild sharing one of their members' posts. And as you can see, Red Chair Travels is certainly making its rounds all over the place in the United States. Now there's a variety of things, as I mentioned, you know, not just your members' ins posts that you can share, but Michigan sharing the Michigan Lodging and Tourism Association's photo. So there's a vast variety of different pages that you could be sharing from. If you put Gourmet Magazine, for example, on a list of maybe places to find inter interesting recipes, you could be also sharing those posts. Now, it depends on, and this is a good way to you know, get ahead on where your marketing is going to be for your association. Do you want it to be all about advertising your ends, or do you want it to be advertising uh, anything political or legislative? You know, B&B of Virginia, for example, is talking about should homestay hosts, and this is a big topic, obviously, right now, be regulated like bed and breakfast. You know, Keep in mind who is viewing this, and also is that the aim that you want the association to go forward with? And I don't necessarily say that's a bad idea, but when you start doing social media marketing, you should really have a clear goal in mind of, are you using social media to help promote members? Are you helping social media to promote tourism? Are you helping, are you using social media uh, for goals, for example? You know, but having that goal in mind in advance is very, very useful as you go forward. Now, if you think about it, it's not just marketing that you're doing. One of the biggest things that gets reshared the most, especially on Facebook, are things that are cute and things that are funny. And I've seen this particular post make the rounds many, many times, 
but it also gets very, very feed, good feedback online. And it also shows that you as an association are human beings as well. So it helps give it a little bit of a personal touch. You know, and again, so if you're sharing things like recipes, if you have a photographer in the state that's posting terrific and beautiful photos, you know, share their posts. You can share any other businesses' pages, posts, and quite frankly, most of them are glad that, that you're sharing their content because it helps promote them as well. Now, one of the keys to gaming's Facebook's algorithm is when you're sharing things, and try not to do this too often because it can backfire, but if you have, like the state of Virginia, for example, has maybe has you know several hundred thousand people that have liked the page, and perhaps they have a very active page with very engaged posts on them, if you share one of their posts very occasionally, it will help that post that's shared onto your own page gain um, sort of algorithm strength in Facebook's mind. So it is a way to a little bit gain the system. You can also share other associations pages, for example. Montana sh shared our um, pie post recently, you know, and it was, it was great of them to do that, and we appreciated it. But so think about using other people's contents because, again, it will help you get ahead of, you know, what's out there and it will make it much less time consuming. Now, in terms of some of the add-ons that you can have in Facebook, you can add extra tabs. Uh, Bed and Breakfast Association of Virginia, for, for example, has an events tab. Um, sharing videos in posts is terrific as well. Um, and mo mostly because, again, like getting ahead on content, if you look in YouTube for content, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of YouTube videos that you can use and you can aggregate for getting ahead on content, not for not just Facebook, for um, any other of your social media mediums. And videos themselves play very well in Facebook. Now, Facebook has, has recently changed something where it's giving a little bit more weight to user added videos. So if you have a video, for example, that your association has taken, I would highly recommend putting it on YouTube. But instead of just sharing the YouTube video itself of your own video um, onto the Facebook page, I would recommend uploading it to Facebook itself as a standalone video. Facebook will give that one more weight than a Facebook or sorry, than a YouTube post. Now, Facebook has this. These are all videos. These are Facebook videos, for example, in the tab. Um, you also have the ability to add other tabs. Um, this is one of the Instagram feeds. This is actually the only uh, Instagram account that I found on a B&B association that's been used so far. But you can add multiple things. There's quite a few free programs out there that you can add as add-ons. Many of them are free. Um, my personal one is Woobox. It's W-O-O-B-O-X. And it can add things like your Pinterest account, for example. If you have a YouTube channel, um, it will bring in your YouTube channel and let you set a primary YouTube video in there, which is kind of neat. Um, some of the other things that you can do to you know, help promote your Facebook pages, you can have separate tabs on it. Uh, so Michigan Lake to Lake, for example, was running a um, win a B&B &B getaway. And so they had an event tab on here that was advertising this. Um, California Association has a sign up on our newsletter tab for getaway. You know, these emails, even if you're not necessarily running, um, you know, a raffle or a sweepstakes, having a join my list tab on here to be able to capture email addresses is a great way to integrate this into Facebook. Um, both constant contact, MailChimp, and vertical response, which are some of the top three ones, and I'm sure that some of the other professional emailing systems, um, they do have the ability to insert that information into um, Facebook so you can capture people's email addresses. Now, Twitter, for example, is one of those ones that many associations, they have set up accounts, but many of them are not using. Now, one of the things that um, Twitter users can do is they can also set up lists. Similar to Facebook is you can set up a list of your own members, and then you can repost slash retweet their content.
Now, in order to do that, um, you'd go to their particular uh, account on Twitter, and then you'd click on this little top cog, and then you'd go add or remove from lists. You can also add to lists things like local tourism facilities, um, local magazines, anything that's helping promote your region or your state, for example, you can add to separate lists. And then again, you can go through these lists when you're looking for content to post and cherry pick and just repost it. Um, Twitter has a little bit different capability than Facebook in that you can have public or private lists. When you add someone to a public list, they actually get a notification that they've been added to the list. When you add someone to a private list, they do not know that they are listed. Now, Main Innkeepers Association, for example, um, they just started their Twitter account recently. And this is a, a good example of a retweet. Um, Twitter just recently changed this. Um, it used to be when you retweeted something or reposted something, you actually only had the character limit that was already posted in the original tweet. They just changed this recently so that if someone has a post that you want to pass along to the people following you, you can actually add your own comments on here, which is really, really helpful because if you're commenting on for example, you know, one of your innkeepers won an award, for example, or, you know, maybe got best of best in TripAdvisor or, or some other thing of note, and you wanted to repost that onto your association's account, you can add something like, we, you know, we give heartily congratulations Farmer Association to this end, for example. You know, so it's a great added way to do that. Um, Sarah, for example, is one of their innkeepers, and as you can see, they've also retweeted that post. Now, one of the features many of both Facebook and Twitter users associations have not set up is the Facebook to Twitter feed. And if you have not yet set that up, it's very, very easy to set up. Um, you would go to facebook.com forward slash Twitter, and I'll actually have that link at the very end of this presentation as well. And what that does is anytime you post something into Facebook, it will automatically feed it into Twitter. So even if you're not going to actively use Twitter, um, instead of actually having it abandoned, so you've set your Twitter account up and you don't actually want to even go over to it, at least it's posting content in from Facebook and keeping it active. Now, why is this important if you're not going to address this and you're not going to be active on Twitter? Because anything posted in Twitter is helping your search engine optimization. A few years ago, Twitter and Google had a deal called the fire hose, which meant that tw tweets actually got fed into Google search results. Um, that got shut off, but they recently signed a deal again where it is impacting them. And even when they didn't have the deal going, I was still finding people's tweets showing up in Google searches for specific things. Um, if you do set up a feed back and forth from Facebook to Twitter, the only thing I would keep in mind is if you're just posting photos, for example, and you're not posting a comment in here or you're not posting text in here, all you're going to see in their feed, I'm sorry, right now is this. Or it'll say, we've posted four photos to Facebook, and then it will have the Facebook link. Now, YouTube is one that I could only find two associations using accounts. YouTube is excellent for search engine optimization. Now, many associations may not have the budgets for um, doing their own videos, which is understandable because video can be extremely expensive. And if you're advertising you know, your state or your region, you want to have it done well. The nice thing about YouTube is you can share other people's videos and pull them into your account. So if an individual in, for example, had, an in, had a video done for their in, you don't necessarily have to have it uploaded to the association's YouTube account to show up on the account itself. Now this is an example of a YouTube account that is fully optimized. So they have a logo, they have a header here, and as you can see, they have some links too. So visit your website, which is the main association website, Google Plus and Facebook. Now you also have an about section. If you do go to set up a YouTube channel and you have a Google Plus account claimed and set up already, don't start a separate YouTube account with a separate login. 
Once you've created a Google Plus account, you will automatically be prompted to create a YouTube channel that's also accessed through the Google Plus account already. They're both owned by you, Google. Um, Google loves its own products, so anything you post on YouTube is very, very search engine optimization friendly. But make sure when you do set up a YouTube account, this is very important, make sure you fill out and optimize, so this is put in, in suggested keywords in your About section. Once you've added this, you can go in and change it anytime, but it does help your search engine optimization. Um, any videos that you upload, you can also add pretty substantial keywords and make sure that you always add a description of the video and a link to wherever it's going. So if you're advertising the association, make sure that you're actually putting that association link in the YouTube description, or if it's a video for a particular in, make sure you're adding that URL to the particular in as well. Now this is what I was talking about, about adding other people's videos. You can create playlists. And a playlist basically brings the content of other people's videos into your own channel. You can have multiple playlists. So you could have a playlist of your innkeeper's videos from their own YouTube channel. You could have a playlist of tourism videos, for example. Um, you could have any other playlist, like this is what it's like to stay at a bed and breakfast, for example. So if this can help advertise your association by, again, using, using other people's content. And the great thing about YouTube is once you've put the content out there, it's not going away. The search engine optimization capability of YouTube is huge. So even if you had a video done years and years ago, that's still going to help your SEO years and years later. Now this is California Hotel and Lodging Association. You can also add a featured video. So if you have videos that are coming in, for example, from your innkeepers that you do want to actually host and promote on your own association channel, try to change this out. This can be changed at any time. The featured video, this is a little bit smaller than, um, but the only example of a, of a lodging association one that I could find that had this, um, the actual di uh, dimensions of this are actually quite a bit bigger. As you can see, there's a, a bigger box. So this featured video will come up for the first time when someone comes to that YouTube page. Now the additional thing, aside from having content, you know, again, not just your associations or your innkeepers videos, but any other videos relating to travel and tourism to repost on um, other of your social media um, uh, sorry, so a third of your social media platforms, you can also insert these YouTube videos um, into websites. You can insert them into the blog posts. Um, I did have a question recently about which was preferred, adding a video to Vimeo or adding it to YouTube. Um, I would say, and maybe this is a personal opinion, but I have seen this um, in search and impacting search. Um, for the SEO value, it's much, much better to be putting the videos in YouTube than it is in Vimeo. Um, Vimeo does allow much, much higher quality and high definition video. You know, you can technically put them in both places, but it's going to give you more bang for your SEO buck to promote it in YouTube instead. Now, blogs are a great medium for uh, promoting your associations. Um, it, coming up with content and coming up with fresh content all the time is hard. It is time consuming. And what do you write about all the time? You can keep writing about state or regional events. You could write about your inns all the time. Um, some associations promote the uh, member inns specials which can be a little bit difficult because if you have member ins, they're not necessarily great about giving you the content. So if you have you know, 30 ins, for example, and 20 of them have special offers all the time, but only two of them are religiously sending you that information, you know, who's ever maintaining your social media, and again, I realize that a lot of it is volunteer, you don't have the time to go out to individual members and find that information. So you're reliant on the members to get it to you. So if you have a blog or you're starting a blog for the association, think ahead about what kind of content you want to start putting in there and then start being consistent about it. Um, you know, one of the things that you can promote is recipes. 
but you might want to space them out and put a content calendar together if you're going to do blogging for associations and say, you know, we're going to post four times a month on our blog, for example, which is fantastic. One of the blog posts is going to be a recipe sourced from a member in. If we can get more recipes, that's fantastic. One of them is going to be a state or regional event that we can write a paragraph about. Uh, one, th one of them is going to be maybe featuring one of the member inns. Uh, one of them is going to be about some of their inns that have won awards. If you start staggering and start spacing out and thinking ahead of getting a content together, ca content content calendar together for your blogs, it becomes much, much easier to post. And then you can start looking back month through month. And you can actually say, well, yes, I'm, I'm accomplishing what we had an outline for. And then you're not looking for content. Now, blogging, it's helpful is if you can start getting ahead of content. So go out to all of your member ends and say, I want one recipe from all of you or two recipes from all of you. And keep those in your back pocket so when they, you need content to put on the blog, you have back stock content for that. If you have events, for example, you know, start spacing them out and putting the content together ahead of time. So if you know that you have two events per month that you want to publicize for a region, Put them all together in a Word document and write your blurbs up ahead of time about, you know, what's so special about this activity? Why should people come to visit the region? And then when it comes time to post them in your blog, you already have that information together. And you can either put it in the blog and pre-schedule it, or you can just go in and copy and paste and add a couple more keywords and then post. Getting ahead of that, especially for blogs for associations, is hugely valuable in terms of a time saver. Now, as you can see, Maryland B&B Association, for example, they have, they're advertising some of their INS member specials. And again, you really have to think about whether you want to do this or not, because you, if they're, again, if they're not sending you that information religiously, are you going to have time to go out and find that content? Now, blogs are terrific for search engine optimization, and I'm just going to jump in briefly for a minute here and talk about, you know, social media, because there's a misconception that a lot of people use social media just for the engagement value, just for the advertising value. You know, if we're using Facebook and we're not getting anything out of it, well, are they actually getting anything out of it or are they not? You know, if you're posting something on Google+, is it about the engagement? Probably not. Is it purely about search engine optimization value? Absolutely. So think of it 50-50. If you're using these social media channels, it's not just about getting people engaged, getting people to come to the state, coming, getting people to come to the member ends. A lot of it's about search engine optimization and a blog is probably at the top of the list in terms of importance about that. Now blogs can also be great content to share on your social media channels. No one has time to go out even if you take all of their blog links and you put them together in one place, nobody has time to go out and look at all the members' blogs to keep up to date on what they're posting. And you don't have to do that. So this is an example of three different blogs, for example. And if people aren't familiar with them, there's something called a feed reader. There's many of them out there. Um, my personal favorite is called Feedly. And again, that link will be at the very end of the webinar. But there's many different ones out there. If you're going to aggregate your members' blog content, I would highly recommend using a feed reader to do so. What a feed reader does is it aggregates all of their posts together. And that's helpful because again, you can go in and if you're looking for something to post or to repost, you can go into your feed reader and just say, hey, this looks really interesting. Climb new heights at Mohawk Preserve, New York. Now, one of the reasons I personally like Feedly is because if you click on each individual post, you can also connect some of your other social media platforms to it. So in this case, Feedly connects to Facebook and to Twitter. So all I'd have to do is hit this right here, and it would automatically feed that blog post into my association's Twitter account. So it makes it a lot easier to aggregate and share my members' content onto both Twitter and Facebook platforms. So this is an example of, this is a Feedly share, and this is what would come up in the post. Now the other option, and this is one of my personal favorites, is called Buffer App.
Um, Buffer app is a social media platform, basically, for sharing onto your other social media platforms. There is a competing resource called Hootsuite. I'll be honest, I don't like Hootsuite nearly as much as I used to. Um, it's a bit more complicated than it used to be, and if you're using it to post to Google+, Plus, it does tend to glitch a lot. Um, Buffer app has a free version and a paid version. The, the free version lets you post up to three social media accounts for free. The paid version, I think it's up to 15 now, including Pinterest, which they've just added. So this is helpful because say you're you know, reading something in the news and you said, oh, one of my member ins just got written up in the New York Times. Wow, that's exciting. So you would go to that article on the New York Times site and you would hit a little key on your browser and it would bring this box up. And it will, what it will automatically do is bring up the title and then it will bring up the URL of the article and shorten it and you can just hit send or add to queue and it will automatically post to all of those channels for you. Now Buffer is neat because it lets you pre-schedule too. So the pre-scheduler, even in the free version, lets you pre-schedule up to 10 posts at a time. So in terms of getting ahead of posting on social media, even if you use Hootsuite, because Hootsuite does this as well, um, but Buffer, I find a much cleaner interface, and I think that I should be getting some money for saying that because I always talk about them, um, but is much easier to use. And once you've set it up, um, lets you edit the posts, it lets you delete them, and it also lets you resort them very easily. So if you have 10 scheduled posts, for example, and maybe one of the posts you were advertising was talking about, you know, craft fair came, coming up in the area and it got rescheduled because there was a big rainstorm that, that came through, you can go into the back end of Buffer and very, very easily switch the time period that it's going to auto post for. Now, Google Plus is an interesting one because, as I said, there are 26 out of the 91 associations that I found that had Google Plus accounts. Only realistically one of them was super active on Google+. There were five that were posting occasionally, and most of the other ones were completely abandoned. Some of them were filled out um, completely in terms of, you know, their about section was optimized, so they had information in it, they had a, a cover photo, they had their logo in there, but many of them were started when Google Plus full first rolled out a few years ago, and then apparently either forgotten about or just left to lie. Um, Google Plus, if you do start using it as an association, um, I mentioned this earlier, don't expect a lot of engagement on it but do expect it to help with your search engine optimization. Um, the good thing about Google Plus is if you're sharing content or if you're posting standalone content on Facebook, just go on over or use Buffer and post the same content onto your Google Plus page. It makes it much easier. Um, one of them's great for SEO, which is Google Plus. Facebook is not so good for SEO. Google can see that you have a Facebook page. It can sporadically see that the content that you're you're putting in, but it really is not helping um, influence anything. Anything posted in Google because it's a Google, Google is a Google Plus product, I'm sorry, Google Plus is a Google product, it loves its own stuff. Um, the neat thing about Google too is the photos in here are huge. So if you have high quality photos that maybe your ins are sharing with you, posting them on Google Plus visually is much, much better and much more impressive than Facebook. Now the neat thing about this is you can also search regionally and you can search nationally or you can search by topic. You can also do this on Twitter. So if you're looking for people um, in specific areas, say that you wanted to target the Boston area, for example, as people that might be interested in staying in bed breakfasts in the Adirondack region, um, you could type into Google Plus and you can also type into Twitter specific searches for um, people and businesses originating in those geographic areas. And you can also circle them. Um, circling something is similar to following on Twitter or liking something on Facebook. And when you put something into a circle, it aggregates their content and their posts. You can have multiple circles as well. So you could have a circle of just your ends, so you could reshare any of them that are using um, Google+. 
quite a few of innkeepers that I know are actively using Google Plus and they have not stopped it. Um, I've had a lot of people say, well, Google Plus is dying and we've heard that it's not really helping our search engine optimization. I have not seen proof of that yet. Um, I have just seen usage continuing to increase. So until I actually see that and I, I'm being, and until I'm being told that by some of the Google gurus out there, I still would encourage people to take advantage of it and to actively post on this. Because even if it is going to die in six months, which I kind of strongly doubt at this point, leverage that six months while it is around. Now here's an example of, um, the, this is my circle of uh, B&B associations, for example. So if I clicked on this, any of their posts would be aggregated together for me. So if I wanted to reshare any of that stuff, and Google Plus acts a lot like Facebook in that, see down here there's a plus, which is sort of equivalent to a like on Facebook, or this, which is a share, which is that little arrow right there, shares it onto my own Google Plus page. And I can also add a comment, just like on Facebook. And so here's what the back end of that looks like. And so if I clicked on each of these, I could go to each individual um, associations page, for example, and see their content. Now, Google Plus has some additional things. And while this may not be relevant necessarily to the marketing aspect, um, it can be educational for your ends. And it can also be um, useful if you have board members um, using Google, for example, and they need to have board meetings. Google Plus has a neat feature called Hangouts, and I, I like Hangouts are kind of like Skype on steroids, in that instead of having a one-on-one -on -one video call, you can have a video call with up to nine other people at the same time. Um, there's also Hangouts on Air, and Hangouts on Air actually gives you the ability to tape it. So, for example, if you had um, someone that you were bringing on, like a journalist, for example, and you wanted to have them do a video interview with one of your innkeepers, you could tape it on Google on Air and actually have that video go right over to your YouTube channel as well to help advertise both your association and that innkeeper. Now, Pinterest is one that I would recommend associations get into a bit more. Uh, there's a lot of pros and cons to Pinterest. I love Pinterest. I try not to go on there except for business because it's very, very easy to get distracted. If your association does start a Pinterest account, make sure that who's ever maintaining this and going into updating it is setting a specific time um, apart just for that. So say maybe you know 10 minutes a couple times a month and just focusing on using it for advertising their members in and use it for advertising the regional or the state area. Because if you do get distracted looking for other things, which happens easily on Pinterest, you're not going to actually get a lot of business types things done. Pinterest is neat, though, in terms of um, it's been around since 2009, which not a lot of people know about. It really has started to really pop for marketing um, about three three years ago. Um, a lot of lodging is getting on it. It's rolling out new things all the time. It's very, very good for search engine optimization. I know quite a few inns that are getting bookings from it, which is fantastic. Um, you know, each of these inns, for example, are members of Bed and Breakfast of Savannah. And if their individual inns are uploading pictures, their pictures can lead directly to their own website, or that picture can lead to a booking link for that inn's availability. As an INS association, you can change that link too. So if you're sharing, if you're Bed and Breakfast of Savannah, for example, and you're helping to advertise um, a member's in, so you have a board with the Marshall House, any of these pictures, some of them could link directly to the Marshall House, and some of them could have, or you could upload a separate photo that says book now, so people would actually be redirected to their booking link directly from Pinterest. So as you can see, they've added things like media and accolades to this. Um, here's a couple of other examples of you know, B&B award winners, breakfasts. Um, these have them separated into regions. So they're, they're coastal ones, they're mountain ones. 
um, B&B bathrooms. I mean, you can make all kinds of interesting boards. And if you have members that are taking a lot of photographs, um, make sure that they're actually adding the photos to where you can repin them. So onto their website, onto their Google Plus pages. If they're um, adding photos to Facebook, you cannot pin photos from Facebook. There is a way to do it. It's not recommended and it's not actually helping because it's, it's redirecting things through a couple of different URLs. Um, you can do a couple of different ways as an association to help your member ins. If your members don't have their own Pinterest boards, you could take a couple of minutes once a week, go to their websites and pin their images directly from their websites themselves. Um, the neat thing about Pinterest is out of all of the marketing things that you can use to help market your ends, this is realistically one of the least time consuming ones because it takes about four seconds to go to their website and say, hey, this is a really beautiful picture of you know waffles with strawberries. I'm going to add this to our board on Pinterest to help promote the end and bang, it's done. You know, so think of some of the other things that you can add if you start doing boards. Um, they do have map boards too. So you can actually do a board with a map of all of your innkeepers on Pinterest itself. Now see, when I was talking about if they don't have their own Pinterest pages, you could take their, you could pin directly photos from their websites. But if they have their own Pinterest accounts, you can also repin. So you could bring their pins that they've already done the work on over to your boards. That's just repinning something. So they've already done a lot of the work for you. Now, Pinterest has a couple of different capabilities. Um, again, this is a WooBox tab of bringing um, a Pinterest board into a Facebook page. Um, and you can also pin videos both from Vimeo and from YouTube. So if you have videos of any sorts, whether they're inns, whether they're um, tourism and travel, whether they're state related, you can have separate boards or you can have one board on Pinterest of actual pinnable videos or pinned videos. And those videos will actually play within Pinterest itself. You can also use Pinterest to distribute your content onto Twitter. It does give you the option, if you look down at the bottom of this, um, it says post to Facebook, post to Twitter. Um, anything that you pin, it will post automatically to Twitter if you have this checked. The post to Facebook will only let you post to a personal account. Pinterest was experimenting very, very briefly for about a month and a half ago, about two years ago now, with having the additional option of posting to a Pinterest or a, a Facebook business page. And unfortunately, that was very, very brief. I don't know why they, why they disabled it, but I hope they'll bring it back. Um, Instagram, I only found one association using this so far. Um, there are a few B&Bs using Instagram, not a lot. Um, I only know of a couple of bed and breakfasts that are really using and leveraging Instagram so far, and a couple of them have gotten some bookings out of it, but not many as of yet. Um, I would recommend checking it out as an association, perhaps starting an Instagram account. I would not spend a whole lot of time on it right now. To me, it has not yet proven itself as a marketing medium. Uh, Pinterest, for example, has. When Pinterest first started to pop for marketing a few years ago, I did not say that you should go use it because, again, it hadn't proven itself yet, but it has since then. Now, one of the things in terms of housekeeping that I would recommend for an association is, and I know I mentioned this in the beginning, but go and check out your current social media accounts. If you're using them and you know, you're advertising that you have a Facebook page, for example, on the homepage of your website and you haven't posted to it for a long time, you know, don't take your Facebook account down, but maybe consider taking that link off your website. You know, the same with Twitter, you know, and the other flip side of that is if you have social media accounts, if you have Google Plus, if you have Pinterest, you know, a lot of these associations I found had social media accounts that were actually active and being used but they weren't being advertised that they had them. You know, so make sure that you add those you know, onto your website. If you have a Google Plus page, for example, and a Facebook page, make sure that they direct to each other too. In the About sections of both, you can put the links in saying, hey, we're also on Google Plus. Hey, we're also on Pinterest. You know, the, the more links that are out there, 
Um, if you have an association email account, for example, that's set aside just for the association and you're actively using social media, make sure that you have those social media link accounts in your email address as part of the email signature. Um, I would recommend, and I see a lot of businesses doing this and a lot of innkeepers and unfortunately some associations doing this, they're putting in icons and the icons link to a link. The problem with that is there's still a lot of email um, account software out there that blocks images. So you're not really helping advertise your social media links because it's blocking the image that it's linked to in the first place. You're much better off having text links. Now, just a, this is a final thing on um, Instagram. This is Websta.me. And Websta is basically like the online version of Instagram. The only difference being you cannot add photos to it. You can follow people. Um, you can like things. You can share things. You can add comments on here. Um, but you can't share the photos and you, can, or you can't upload photos to it. But from, from a traditional interface, I personally find it a lot easier to use Instagram on a desktop computer because I can actually see what I'm doing. Um, you know, so and if I was going to look for other accounts to follow, for example, or look at for other things to like, I would use this interface to do it. So if I was an association and I did want to start an Instagram account and perhaps starting to, if I knew, for example, that I had in members that were using Instagram and I wanted to help promote them, I would probably use this interface in which to do it. Now this is the final one in terms of um, social media. Um, this is a LinkedIn business page. Um, Iowa is the only association I have found for a and b that has actually filled out and optimized their LinkedIn page. They do not have any posts in it. Uh, this is an example of a post. Um, you, you will see a follow button up here. Business pages on LinkedIn are not going to get a lot of interaction if your association does try, uh, start to start a LinkedIn business page, don't expect interaction. You're using it purely for the search engine optimization value. And again, this goes back to where I said a lot of the value of using social media is not about the engagement, but it is about the SEO. So if you had important things to share about your association, you know, you were in the news, your members were in the news, you had some big event that was going on, like an um, end-to-end cookie tour, for example, you know, make sure that if you do have and set up a LinkedIn business page, you do post these updates in there. Um, Buffer app will post to it automatically as well. That is one of the social media platforms that integrated into it. Okay, and I'm going to take some questions now, and these are some of the links that I referenced earlier. So if people have had questions and they have not yet asked them, I would ask them to put them into the box to the right. Okay, and let's see. Um, can an association admin have a buffer account for the association social media accounts separate from my own buffer account? Um, yes, they can. Um, you might need to have it set up in a separate browser if you're using the buffer integration button into it. Um, okay, and we have a question. Maybe, maybe it's just that I've never warmed up to Twitter, but just how effective is Twitter for the B&B &B industry? Well, that's a good question. I mean, I I talk to a lot of B&Bs on Twitter all over the world, and the ones that like to use Twitter and the ones that are engaging with people on Twitter are getting an awful lot of bookings out of it. I mean, Twitter has the convenience of, you know, you can start a conversation with anyone anywhere, and you can also just search for a topic. So you could search for someone if you're in, for example, um, had weddings, and this is specifically to an inn versus an association, but if your inn was hosting weddings, you could do a demographic search for people, and they are asking this on Twitter, I'm looking for a place to get married next October, and you can actually talk and respond to that person. From an association's aspect, you could be using it as a customer service venue, and you could also be actively using it to go out and find those people that are looking for places to stay, because there are 
are a lot of people that ask specifically on Twitter that you can search for saying, I'm going to Boston next weekend. Does anybody have any recommendations on nice place to stay? Um, and you can do that again regionally. Um, you know, if people have in questions, for example, you know, you can you can say, hey, you know, we're having this great fair coming up next weekend. So if you knew, for example, that um, like the big E exposition um, here in Springfield, which is, you know, not too far away from me, I know that when the Big E is happening, there's a ton of questions on Twitter in this geographic area that if I was an innkeeper, I'd be jumping all over because people are looking specifically not just for information about place to stay, but we're coming to the Big E, can we have some suggestions on where to park, where to go out to eat, um, where's the best place for this, that, and the other thing. And if you were an innkeeper or even an association that was taking advantage of this and jumping in and answering those questions, you're drawing attention to your own accounts and somebody saying, wow, this association is really helpful, I need a place to stay, maybe I'll go check out their members or this innkeeper is very helpful, I need a place to stay, let's go you know, find out what they're like because we haven't made reservations anywhere yet. Um, let's see, Facebook to Twitter feed, does it also send the photo? Um, Chloe, <laughs> sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Generally it doesn't, it just sends the Facebook link itself um, and it'll say we've added photos to it. Um, I have seen it I, I guess it's a glitch where it occasionally has sent the photo directly into Twitter from Facebook, but I've not generally seen that. It's just the link. Um, how does Hootsuite and Buffer, not quite sure of this question, does Hootsuite and Buffer both feed readers? Um, so are they feed readers? I'm going to read that as um, no, they're not. Um, there is an integration with Hootsuite where you can bring in some external things. I don't necessarily know if it works with every blog format. Um, Buffer, you cannot bring in um, posts from other, other sources. Uh, will there be a summary we can print out? I can certainly provide that for you. Um, for the North Carolina b and Inns Association, a previous board member hijacked our Google Plus information and now the admin can't get into the account. What should we do? Start a new account. Um, no, you don't need to start a new account. Um, there is a phone number that you can call. It's actually the same phone number that you would call for Google Places help, and they will help you get back into your account. I've run into this, oh God, like probably 15 times already. Um, and I can, I'll send you that number afterwards. Um, can you summarize the buffer and specialty apps that send to multiple sources? Um, in terms of summarizing them, I would say, you know, A, it's to make your life easier. Um, B, it's to help, you know, aggregate the content together for you in one place and make it much easier to post out to multiple sources. Um, and in terms of, you know, summarizing it, if you could give me a little bit more information about what specifically you're looking for, then maybe I can address that a little bit better. <laughs> I knew this was coming. Um, is there an update on Google removing that pesky no known, no known availability from our Google Places listings? Um, while this isn't directly um, linked to social media, that has been an ongoing topic. Um, I am going to leave that for last because that's a little bit longer of a conversation. Okay, and oh, there was a comment, um, and we do auto post from Facebook to Twitter using this using a recipe on if this then that. This shows the inline photos. Oh, that's interesting. Thank you. I will keep that in mind, and they will add that. Um, and I will, you know what? I will send the number out to anybody and the link out to anybody that's having issues with um, a Google Plus. Um, account at all. So if they have issues with it, then they can pass it along to other people that need it. Um, yes, this webinar is being recorded. Um, and I'm sorry you don't see anything and only listening, but it is recording and it will be available online. And then would you mind repeating the stats about how many associations are using Facebook? I certainly will. Okay. 
of the 91 associations that I found, and there might be more, I know there's more associations than that, but those are the ones that I found after hours and hours of, of checking out what was online. 72 of them have pages. Um, 55 of them were active. 20 of them were completely abandoned. 43 of those 72 were linked off the association's homepage. 31 of them had no links off of their homepage. And 10 of them that were extremely active had no links at all. And out of that, um, the no links from the homepage. OK. And then does anybody have any more questions regarding Opal Media? Could you provide the list of the 91 associations? Um, this list is actually on my blog. Um, it's There's two different blog posts about that. Um, so if you just take a list, then you can see a rundown of that. Okay, and then I'm going to go back to uh, the question about the availability. That has been an issue that I've been digging around in. Um, I know that it's come to the attention of the American Hotel and Lodging Association, and many of the state lodging associations are getting involved in this in, as well. Um, what seems to, it seems to be, and we've finally proven this from Google directly after multiple, multiple phone calls, is it seems to be related to people being able to get listed in Google's Hotel Finder, um, which is not great news for B&Bs. This is, I'm not going to say it's 100% accurate, but it's at about 99.9% .9 accurate right now. Um, this has been confirmed by a bunch of managers so far, and also by one search engine optimization expert that did a track back to where that code is being drawn from directly to hotel ads. So that's kind of a, that would give my answer, I think, in, in my mind. Um, whether that's not fair for B&Bs, absolutely it's not fair. Um, whether they're going to change it or not, I hope so. Um, I do know that in terms of um, where amenities are coming up, that's not related to Google Hotel ads. That's from a completely different source. Um, if anybody is interested, I would be happy to send them the links to be able to edit that. Um, it does, from what I'm seeing, take several weeks for once you've entered the information into it for actually to show up on the Google listing. Um, you know, originally we had some questions about whether that availability or lack thereof of availability um, was tied into the OTAs. Apparently it's not, although it does help if you're listed on, on, on an OTA because then at least it will go over to your OTA listing. Um, there are some downsides from what I'm seeing so far. There are some B&Bs that are listing on Google Hotel Finder. And I don't know 100% yet, I'm still digging around on this, but it only lets you list up to 180 days so far for in terms of availability, which doesn't give you a lot of extended, if someone made it, wanted to make a reservation you know, for next fall, for example. Um, would you mind posting the link? Correct. Would you mind posting the link to correct the Google availability glitch to Google Plus Innkeeper Circle? Yes, I will certainly do that. Um, I would mention for those people that are not Pi members, um, we do have a fairly active Google Plus group that is primarily innkeepers. We do have a few vendors on it. Um, I am very, very careful not to let them sell you on anything. And if you do, get a, if I do get a complaint, please let me know because I'll kick them out. Um, I do recommend anybody that is a Pi member to please be active on the Pi forums. Um, we're having some great information posted in there. Um, I do have one question before we wrap up, and I would ask if anybody now has any additional questions, put them in there. I do have a brief poll that I'd like to run, and it's just to see who was um, on this call today. So I'm going to launch this right now. Um, um, this is multiple choice, and if you do have uh, multiple uh if you do have multiple, I'm sorry, it's glitching right now, <laughs> speaking of glitching. If, if we do have multiple things that you're a member of, please add them all. Okay, all right, that's great. So um, just so everyone else knows, um, this 
poll was we had 77% of attendees were state or regional association members. 23% were PI members. That's fantastic. Um, 38% director or employee of a state or regional association. 46%, this is fantastic, of a board member or of a state or regional association. And 7% of you are not a member of any association. I think we need to fix that. So I would highly encourage people to join their state associations, regional associations, and a shameless pug for please join PI. We need your support. We are there to support both innkeepers and associations. Um, so if anyone has any more questions, please let me know at this time. If you do think of anything after we're done with this webinar that um, you just, we just occurred to you after we're done, please email it to me at marketing at pi.org and I would be happy to answer it as to the best of my ability. Um, and we did have one more question pop in. Um, what is the web address of your blog? <laughs> um, if, if you just Google Chef Forfang, it's F-O-R-F-E-N-G, um, you'll come to it. Okay, and thank you everybody for attending this webinar. Have a wonderful day today. Bye-bye.